guarantee you the minute I start talking, my birds will start screaming because that's just what they do. I have a painting I want to do, very much like the one that I did out there at Sawgrass Lake Park, where I tried to do an expressionistic painting. It didn't come very good. That's not really my style. But I think you have to work really hard at that to be free enough to just grab what you see. There goes one bird. So anyway, I'm repainting the scene with a photograph that I like better than the painting that I was doing. But can I make that photograph as beautiful as or the painting as beautiful as that photograph? No, I can't. There's no way. It's very frustrating, which is why most artists don't want to show the original photo, at least not really with great detail, because you can't copy nature and make it look as beautiful as nature. You just can't. So you have to concentrate on a few things that you think are needed. Something that is special about the painting, something that you think maybe the light is causing a certain type of effect. And... That's what I'll have to do here because, no, I can't make that painting look as beautiful as the original. It's impossible. So, here we go. Let me give it a stab. You can follow along with me. If you want, you can try painting it too. Just pause the painting as we go along. Okay? Enjoy. So on this painting, I pretty much show you the beginning and the end. The middle I kind of did on my own. I think the beginning and the end is the most important part of the painting. Blocking it in, getting the tones right, getting the concept in. The middle of the painting is just kind of a lot of work, just doing stuff that has to get done. But the final details in the end make or break the painting. It takes it from an amateur to a professional looking finish. You have to know when to stop. You have to know how much to put in and how much to leave out. Those are all personal choices. Everyone makes different choices. You have to know how much detail you want in it, how much you want your viewer to have the opportunity to imagine himself or herself. I like to allow my viewer to complete the painting in their own mind, period. I think they know that I'm painting trees and leaves and they do not need me to paint every last leaf on that tree and every last branch on that tree in order for them to understand the concept of what I'm trying to get in. It's more important to me that they say, wow, it must have been a sunny day. Look at the reflections in the water and how the sun is shining off the left side of the branches. It feels very warm and inviting. I wish I could go there. I want them to say that, not, oh my gosh, look at that. I mean, she must have spent a year putting in every last leaf and twig. What a great artist. And for some people, that's exactly what they do want to hear. That is exactly what they do when they paint. And that is fine. That is tedious. It takes a lot of work and concentration. And my hat is off to that type of artist. I have done a couple of paintings like that. And it's wonderful to look at. But it's not necessarily something I want to keep repeating. Now we're at the middle of the painting. Here's where I start taking things out, putting things in, changing things, adjusting my sky, 
going back and forth. Some people call this push and pull. It's not really push and pull. Push and pull is pushing colors back and forth so that they interlock and interweave and make your painting have some zing and some pizzazz, some continuity. But a lot of people call correcting their painting push and pull. Right now, I'm correcting my painting. I'm not doing push and pull. I'm deciding whether I have too much sky in, too little sky in. Is there too many, are there too many leaves on my trees? Did I overdo a color? Are my sky holes okay? Should I put more leaves in over here? Let me go back and put some more leaves in. Then I say, oh my gosh, why did I put those branches like that? And I change those a little bit. A series of corrections is what my paintings are, and I have no shame in admitting that. If I just painted only a perfect stroke every time, I would spend 20 minutes before I would be brave enough to put down that stroke. And I don't feel like I'm painting spontaneously when I do that. I use the palette knife for a lot of this painting. I put branches in and took them out, depending on how dark I wanted them. I thought that was very clever, having the branches of those trees touch. And later when I looked at it, I decided I did not like that at all, and I took it back out again. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. Sometimes you're concentrating on trying to get nice little skinny branches. That's what I need. I need lots of little branches. And then you realize, oh my gosh, I put too many branches in. This is what artists do. There is no perfect artist out there. There are some people who only show you their perfect work, and that's okay, but I want you to learn. I want you to understand that you can paint too, and that, no, don't just look at the perfect ending of the painting and think that artist is incredible and you could never do what they're doing, because I guarantee you they had to work very hard at that, and they might have thrown 10 paintings out before they were willing to show you that one. Anyway, I'll be quiet here for a few minutes and let you just watch. You can't see how many times I'm dipping in my paint or how many times I'm wiping off my brush. These are water mixable oils. I do not use turpentine. So I'm just wiping my brush on my rag.
my hands in the way a little bit here. But I'm using a fine brush to just put a couple of last little details in. A few branches here and there. In the previous painting, the light was coming very strongly low on the left-hand side. In this painting, it's slowly moving across, still from the left, but more overhead. Usually when I paint, I start out with a very light coat in the beginning of staining the canvas, and I progressively get thicker and thicker layers. My final coat is usually very thick. That's where my warmest, and brightest colors come in. You are supposed to view a painting approximately six feet back, but I'm bringing you in close just so you can see what the strokes of the paint look like. When you step back, I hope you get the illusion of the sun shining on those trees and on that water. <laughs> 